Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is the newest Android flagship phone from LG. It's the G3. So it's the successor to the LG G2, which was really nice, but it had its flaws. And this new phone here is out to compete with the Galaxy S5 and the HTC One and others. So what does it bring? Well, first of all, I've done two previous videos on this phone. One right before it actually came out. It was actually an exclusive video and MKBHD first hands-on with this new phone before you saw it anywhere else. And my impressions were pretty positive. And then a second video all about its display, because if you haven't already heard, this phone's display matches the highest resolution ever in any phone at 2560 by 1440, or more than 530 pixels per inch. So really what we're out here to find out is if packing all those pixels has a negative effect on two of the most important things to consider in a new smartphone, the battery life and the performance. We'll get into that very shortly. But really, we've already seen that this is a very handsome phone. That's the first thing that struck me about it. It's plastic, yes, but with this brushed metal looking finish, it kind of fakes a metal look, but it keeps the phone much lighter by using plastic, and it has a curved back that fits in your hand pretty nicely. So I actually like the way it feels in the hand. And because of this back button placement, you actually get to hold the phone just a little bit differently than other phones that put the buttons on the side and the top. Uh, and it's actually super quick and easy to get used to. It seems weird at first, but it's actually really intuitive after just a couple of hours of using the phone. And the back buttons here are also shortcuts when the screen is asleep. So holding the volume button up will quickly open your notes app or holding the volume button down will quickly open your camera app from asleep. Would have been even nicer if I could change these shortcuts though, because I never really use LG's notes app but they're there. So button placement keeps the phone profile thin, keeps the bezels really thin and sexy. Uh, it's still a big phone though, don't get me wrong. It is compact for a phone of its size. It's a big 5.5 inch display, but with the thin bezels. But still, most high-end phones have a five inch or 5.1 inch display. So this is still gonna be a very big phone for a lot of people. So the display, you can watch my original video about its sharpness and resolution, and you'll basically see that it's insanely sharp. It's significantly sharper than a 1080p display or even an iPhone with its sub 720p display. And it does look pretty great. Even if the colors are a little bit off, the contrast ratio is not so great. The white balance is questionable. You know, a lot of the other aspects of the display aren't really all that great. It looks a little bit pink or a little bit warm to me when compared to an HTC One. But overall, really anything that can take advantage of this, this sharpness is a couple of years out. I mean, that isn't much right now. You know, the resolution is not going to make a huge difference now because apps and games and wallpapers don't take advantage of it yet. But I would expect to see a lot more Quad HD phones start to come out in the second half of this year and next year. And then we'll start to see a lot more apps that will take advantage of this sharpness. But right now, it's just kind of a spec line to get you to, to look at the phone and pay attention to it. But it's a good looking phone anyway, and I really get this, this idea, I had this idea to go out and ask people if they could tell the difference between this LG G3's display and maybe another 5.5 inch display and another phone that's 1080p. But I have a feeling a lot of people would like the G3 anyway, just because of how thin the bezels look. It just looks better than a lot of other phones. I mean, you could have given me a 1080p display here with this thin of a bezel, and I'd probably still be just as happy with it. And it all comes down to the fact that this phone's design happens to be, well, just really attractive. And around the back, you have this removable back. So you reveal here a 3000 milliamp hour battery and a micro SD card slot for those of you who want to expand storage. And with battery life, I was again impressed. It was actually excellent. So there was obviously concerns about whether or not this display would have an impact on battery life, pushing all those pixels, taking a hit on the graphics. But as far as I can tell, no, uh, my usage was always pretty moderate to heavy. And for the first few days, the battery life was decent, but then it got better, especially the standby time. I feel like you could go to sleep with 100% battery and wake up with 99% and you'd be great. And now it lasts just as long on a charge as the one M8 that I was raving about. Uh, I had a road trip the other day where I got four and a half hours of screen on time, which is more than I've gotten with plenty of other 1080p phones. So I really like the battery life on this phone, plus the fact that it's removable, that's a big bonus for a lot of people. Now the camera it's sporting also has some pretty unique features too. So the software that LG threw in here, it's really, really simple. They're going after uh, a really simplified UI, no real fine tuning controls. You're not gonna get any manual modes in here, but it is outfitted with some neat modes where you can change obviously the resolution and you can change the size of the videos you're taking up to 4K, you can turn stabilization on and off. But you also have this magic focus mode, you have 
a fist gesture selfie, which lets you just make a fist and then open it and it'll start the countdown timer so you don't actually have to touch your phone to take a selfie. I know it's, it's a selfie feature, but whatever. And then you have laser autofocus and that is really, really great. So laser autofocus on the back of this phone, you might've been wondering what that last little port does. It actually fires a laser at the thing you're taking a picture of and then reflects it back and is able to tell exactly how far away the subject is, focus the camera and take the picture. And that all happens extremely quickly. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really a big fan of laser autofocus. It does really well with landscapes. It does really well with up close subjects and macro stuff. Uh, and it's one of the fastest focusing cameras I've used in a smartphone. So props to LG for that. Now, another thing that we were talking about was the performance of this phone. And again, I've found that it's been pretty good. Uh, if you check it out versus another high-end phone with a 1080p display, like the HTC One M8 or the Galaxy S5 or something like that, it holds up pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the only tiny little thing I found, which is kind of ironic because I saw it in another phone, is a little bit of a delay with the soft buttons, but a lot of these little minor things can be fixed with a software update. There were concerns about the graphics being taking a hit because of all these pixels. I would say I don't see anything. The gaming is exactly the same. The opening and closing apps is exactly the same. The scrolling, the frame rates, everything still looks great. So this is, of course, the LG skin on top of Android 4.4 KitKat. Uh, and it seems to perform really well, and the design is okay. Now, a lot of people are really gushing over this design. I just think it's okay. Uh, it's definitely better than the skin that was in the LG G2, so I appreciate that improvement, but I'm, of course, you know how I feel about Android skins already. Uh, there are a couple of things I would like to see changed. You can only really see maybe two, sometimes three notifications at once before you have to scroll, just because of how much stuff is going on in the notification bar. Uh, the settings app is still pretty ugly and I think awful to navigate. It's been a while since the skinned phone did settings well, and I think most smartphones could really use an overhaul to the settings app. And the multitasking, I, it's smart. It makes a lot of sense. The pinch to zoom to be able to see more or less apps at the same time is smart. But is this really how you wanted it to look? I'm not sure uh, that I really like the way it appears. Uh, but there's also plenty of other interesting, great stuff about this LG skin. One thing I love, the LG keyboard is really nice. Uh, if you go into the keyboard settings, you can pick exactly how tall it is. When I first got the phone out the box, the keyboard was actually too small for me, despite it having a big display. But I have big hands, I made the screen uh, and the keyboard bigger, and now I love that it has the, the number pad available all the time, it's great. I also love that the enhanced clipboard feature uh, is so smart. I think every phone should adopt something like this. It remembers multiple things that you can copy, multiple screenshots, multiple things that you wanna paste. And whenever you hold down to start to try to paste something, it'll ask you which thing you wanna paste. It's very, very useful. Also, LG has a couple of these notices, these smart cards, which I thought were pretty funny. I don't know why I found them so funny. You could just go to Google now for the weather, but. It always felt the need to give me a long sentence about how the day was going to go, so that was nice. Uh, and there's plenty of other features that LG's worked on. There's the dual window for multitasking. There's the knock code for unlocking your phone. I stopped using it, but it is pretty neat. Uh, so tons of stuff like that. Uh, the one amp speaker on the back of this phone, it's supposed to be amplified. It's supposed to be special. It's not special. I mean, it's kind of loud a little bit, but it's really kind of just like any other back-facing speaker phone. I also wish the notification LED was a little bigger, just because I've been messing with a lot of phones recently that it's way brighter on. But overall, really, you gotta admit, the G3 is a complete package. There are a lot of great things about this phone. If you're coming from a G2, you're gonna like a lot of the improvements, especially in the software department. And you just can't say no to that display when you're future-proof like that. The one weird thing that I found was it tends to heat up a little bit. I have screenshots of times where it would tell me I can't brighten the phone anymore because if I do, uh, it'll overheat and it basically doesn't want me to. So it's trying to cool the phone down by limiting how bright I can make the display. And one time I was navigating in Google Maps and it actually threatened to basically say it's gonna turn off soon if you don't cool this phone down. So sometimes it does heat up a little bit more than other phones I've used. I haven't gotten that notice on other phones, but other than that, I gotta love it. So bottom line is, I am really a fan of what I'm seeing on the LG G3, and I really like it. Now, if you'd asked me what I thought the best phones of 2014 would be uh, at the beginning of this year, I might have left the LG G3 off the list just because I wasn't a huge fan of the G2. I wasn't a fan of LG's skin, not as much as some other people anyway. So I, I probably would have gone straight to the Galaxy series and the Note series and the HTC One. But now that this is out, and now that we know everything we know about it, it's clearly easily one of the best phones that's come out this year, if not the best. 
especially because of the display. So again, let me know what you guys think of this LG G3. That's been it for this full video review. Thank you for watching. And if you have any other questions or comments about it, feel free to drop those in the comment section below so I can answer them and talk to you guys. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.